Hello and welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Volodymyr Solohub. Join me now to discuss the government's plans for large-scale privatization. Is the chairman of the State Property Fund of Ukraine, Mr. Ihor Belus. Mr. Belus, welcome to Viewpoint. Good morning. Mr. Belus, uh, just uh, earlier this month, uh, Minister of Economy Abramovich and yourself announced the government's plans for large-scale privatization. Uh, how confident are you that these plans will, go, that the privatization will go forward, given that the necessary legislation is still not in place? Well, I have to tell that I'm really confident, and I'm working hard towards this, uh, I would say, situation, right, which will bring big success to Ukraine. I'm sure. Effectively, we're talking about uh, several very important companies to go for sale, which is a death support plan, which is the leading number one fertilizer, still in the state ownership. And we're talking about three to four power distribution companies, which will be the core block of the biggest state-owned enterprises for sale. Right Today, we are basically half a step away from sort of the big launch, right? And we're talking about the second reading of our law, which is uh, expected basically in 10 days, right? Yesterday I had a conversation with the head of committee. He's quite optimistic. You know, I also spoke to, to other counterparties in the parliament. So everybody is very positive, including kind of premier minister and the president, despite all this sort of political turbulence. So uh, this is equally important stuff for the country. All right. And we really expect this to happen. And we will be kind of full uh, sort of launch of this process, uh, basically uh, start of March. Uh, Mr. Belus, but well, it looks like a lot of people uh, are confident that this is an important step for the country, apart from the MPs and some other groups who are connected to the state-owned companies, because for years the state-owned companies were used to siphon the money out of the budget. So again, what gives you this confidence that this will go forth, given that the, the, these necessary laws uh, were adopted in the first reading only in the 16th attempt, which, which uh, the, the Minister um, of Economy, Bramavish, just told us in an interview. And also, you yourself said in one of the interviews that you had to involve the ambassador of the United States to convince the MPs to vote on that. That's exactly why I'm really uh, positive. Uh, because there is You're so involving the ambassador again. <laughs> there, there is, uh, we're involving basically everybody, right? And uh, this is not a secret that we are working in a tight cooperation with USID, with other IFIs, who are really helping us and assisting in preparation of this prioritization and hope will be, will be sort of close to us when we will be conducting that. So we're making maximum transparency in this process and this is the second most important part after the price of this assets, right? Because we're trying to relaunch and reopen the whole process. So participation of the, these foreign institutes in this process alongside kind of Ukrainian political elite, right, and in peace and everybody, I think uh, this will contribute to overall success and that's why I'm positive. Uh, about the law, I mean. What about the the most recent scandal with Minister Bramavich's resignation? Uh, do you are you concerned that this might hinder the privatization process? Given that he was uh, backing this privatization, he was he was one of the f on, on on the forefront of doing going forward. Well, exactly. Uh, well, uh, this is all negative news, right? Uh, all negative news are kind of negatively uh, impacting or affecting privatization, right? Let's kind of make this statement, right? Abramovich and me and myself, we were working very close towards successful privatization. We've done quite a bit. We prepared some laws together and there are some, some stuff in the backlog, right? Uh, pending uh, to the parliament. You know, I mean, this is not the end of the world. That's his position, but I'm continuing because I'm trying to be less. I'm more neutral than than him, and I need this prioritization. No matter what, we all need this prioritization. You know, and despite kind of changes in the ministries or kind of any other political developments, I mean, the prioritization is something that must happen. Yeah, but uh, Mr. Lewis, you're a former investment banker. Uh, of all the people, you should know that the uh, political turbulences like this. They do affect exactly. the market price of the companies. I know. So how how much how much did, did that hinder the price of the companies which you were planning to to sell? Well, you know, prices is a very sensitive point, right? I mean, first of all, we're talking about the state-owned companies, which are not really perfectly effective, right? So there's a problem inside of these companies, and it's always been the problem. Uh, the second problem is, is the commodity prices down globally, right? But this is important. The price is important stuff, right? But the most important for us is to sort of get back to investors, you know, show them that we can do transparent and professional privatization, transparent processes, right? 
get them interested in Ukraine, open this door. So, you know, we, we want to get maximum price which is possible today, and we will try to do this. So this is, this is true for fertilizer companies, this is true for power distribution companies, even though the first is working towards export, the second block is working in the Ukraine, right? Talking, talking about the price, Mr. Bilius, uh, if everything goes as planned, if the parliament adopts the necessary laws, uh, what, is your best, what are your best estimates of how much you can raise out of the privatization during this year? Well, given the, the plan, uh, I would say this is a conservative plan that we have, selling the fertilizers, the six uh, uh, power distribution companies, and a number of other secondary assets, we can easily do a billion dollars, uh, right? which will be an uh, important addition to Ukrainian budget and important help on the stabilization of foreign currency. Um, you know, this is what the governor of the National Bank uh, said, and this is exactly true. And um, if we do a good job and the, the basically environment, uh, investment environment will get a little bit better, we can do better than that. This is kind of very conservative estimates, I would say. Um, can we talk about one of the most lucrative assets which is uh, prepared for, for privatization, the uh, Odessa uh, seaside uh, factory and um, its, its, its market price for, for the investors. How much are you planning? Um, you, again, in your recent interview, you said that you're planning, uh, this will be one of the first entities to be put on sale. You're planning to complete the privatization in the second quarter of, of, this, of this year. Uh, how much do you plan to raise out of this uh, company? Well, uh, we're selling something every day, right? Which is small, mid-size, uh, but the big ones, really big ones, which is uh, that's our port side plant will go for sale, I think, starting May, right? This will be official announcement. We expect to close transaction by uh, end of the second quarter. This is true. Um, you know, this is the big deal. Uh, we're expecting to raise, you know, hundreds of millions of US dollars for this asset. There is a demand, even though the commodities market are down. The asset is very unique and specific, right? It's a gatekeeper for all fertilizers towards the, the Black Sea Basin, right? All the big strategics know about that. We have a brilliant team of advisors, UBS Investment Bank, Ernst & Young, Becky McKenzie. So we're doing, doing something that Ukraine has never seen in terms of professional and transparent privatization. So if you put this all cards together, we have a very win-win combination. So if we don't use this chance and don't want it in the parliament, this will be a big failure. So because so far, professionally, we're doing everything right. Everybody's prepared. Investors are waiting. You know, embassies are a little bit worried, right, because they're expecting their investors to come over and actually invest this big money into Ukraine. And, uh, you know, effectively, if we do this, you know, we're going to have another big investors like Krivater Stahl back in 2005, which is the great, actually, sign for everybody in Ukraine and outside, right? Uh, Mr. Belus, in the past, the privatization was used by um, Ukrainian oligarchs, by uh, Ukrainian um, shady businessmen to get their hands on the lucrative uh, state assets. How do you make sure that this does not happen during this privatization again? And well, basically, what, what, what happens is just uh, the, 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 the assets switch, switch pockets. Well, you know, the way it happened before, not just in Ukraine, but in other emerging market countries, is that privatization was basically written, the qualification criteria were written, you know, for a specific buyer, you know, and basically uh, qualifying him, you know, if you're buying a mine, you should have been operating in a mine business specifically for, for some certain criteria which are set only for one buyer. Today we don't have this, right? The only thing which we're asking from a potential investor is that who you are, what you are, where did you get your money, and who is the ultimate beneficiary, are you under sanctions, are you under FATF, you know, are you, uh, you know, kind of, what kind of state capital you have in your own capital, right? So all these very transparent kind of questions and rules for everybody, meaning that we're inviting all industrial and financial investors who are kind of set for these rules, and then it's basically subject for them to do due diligence and analysis of the asset and come to the open auction. So they're not bidding, they're coming for the auction. What is the position of your um, uh, state property fund mm -hmm. uh, towards the bidders from Russia? Well, that's exactly what we're trying to get from this law, right, which is pending in a second reading, that uh, we are not, we're not welcoming kind of Russian investors at this stage because this is a country aggressor, right, and we're putting a ban on this. 
right? There are many other investors in the world, not just Russians, right? And, uh, you know, so the, the biggest problem is not to let kind of state Russian capital, you know, to participate in Ukrainian privatization. But given what we have, the map what of investors... What about private Russian capital? You know, the private Russian capital sometimes looks like American or French or Italian. And uh, the way we can do this is to investigate up until the final beneficiary owner. And this is what we're going to do in this process, right? So ultimately, we're going to check uh, the beneficiaries. And if they, for example, misstate some information, and we will find out in the next five years during the investment obligation period, we'll basically take the asset back to the country. Well, but uh, well, all of the Russian oligarchs are connected to uh, the Russian government this way or another. So uh, will that mean that you will exclude any all and any and all well, Russian you know, let's keep it simple. Uh, we will exclude uh, basically all Russian investors from privatization, right? So, so no Russian no company, Russian private investors. or state-owned, will be able to buy exactly. a, a piece of Ukrainian property exactly. during this wave of privatization. Exactly. But we have to pass the second reading. Understood. And um, how do you make sure again that uh, during the um, the discussions of the the draft bill, which is currently being held in the parliament? Uh, certain amendments are not put into the law which will allow this loophole? Well, you know, I'm checking this on a daily basis, right? And everybody is uh, aware, you know, of this norm. This is basically one of the three changes that we're making, right, to this law. The law is very simple, right? So everybody is aligned. Uh, nobody is making any amendments further on this, right? I mean, this is not a problem which is precluding us from voting. You know, there's a big dispute about advisors. This is the, the, the problem which some MPs don't really understand, the, the big assets we have to sell with the help of advisors, because it's impossible to do that, right? I mean, the, uh, the the kind of the aggressor point was never has never been an issue. I would say like this. Are you concerned of any uh, possible investment lawsuits from Russian companies if you include into the legislation uh, the pro prohibition for for the Russian companies to take part in the privatization? No. Uh, apparently, they might claim that this is discriminatory and uh, file investment claims. Well, to be honest, I don't believe that the Russian investors would really kind of uh, rush towards Ukraine now because of the political situation we have. Uh, a lot so of Russian companies are still in Ukraine. That's true. That's true. And uh, a lot of these companies are OK and well operating, right, like mobile phone operators. I mean, and they're paying a lot of taxes, etc. I mean, uh, most of these companies are half Russian, half international already. So it's a mixture, right? And this is where the, the issue uh, is, how do you separate the mixture? You know, sometimes the companies are public and listed on the stock exchange, etc. So what is the, uh, our attitude to this? So there are many detailed questions if you go down to the process. But we are talking conceptually, right? So we are kind of not in a position to accept kind of pure Russian investors to participate in this wave of privatization, right? Perhaps when political situation is changed, we will reconsider. But that's not my question, right? Today I want to have, you know, the most transparent and effective privatization we can have this time, right? And we are offering a number of assets which are clear, you know, and, and you know, this is very transparent assets, I would say, right? There's a very clear positioning of these assets. There are some investors who are willing to buy this, right? And we have a list, you know, despite even these turbulent times in the investment world, I think we will have quite a few participating and showing the interest. Well, we'll see how these things develop uh, further. Uh, Mr. Belius, many thanks for uh, finding well, time to you. join us today. We were discussing the ambitious plans of the Ukrainian government for the large-scale prioritization this year with the chairman of the State Property Fund of Ukraine, Mr. Ihor Belus. Thank you for watching Viewpoint.